What's up, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Hope all you're having a great, great day so far. Um, getting into this episode of GH. <laughs> Listen, Valentin is borderline pathetic. Valentin irked my nerves so much this episode. He just got on my nerves so much. Like, he would not let Nina out of his sight. He did not want to let her out of his sight. But she had to go off to her little spa bachelorette party he had to go to the floating rib for his bachelor party but he did not want to let her out of his sight because you want to know why he was afraid one of his secrets was going to get slipped to her that's what he was afraid about he was on pins and needles and he's he's so pathetic that he sat there and tried to threaten michael he basically tried to threaten michael oh if nina's not happy because of something sasha says or does um, he would have to do something or whatever. Are you serious? And I love how Michael didn't back down to him. I love it. Michael's not afraid of him. Please. Valentine is the least of Michael's worries. I mean, granted, Valentine can be dangerous, maybe. I just see him as a wimp. I really, I mean, when you think Cassidine, you don't think Valentine. You think Nicholas. You think, hell, Nicholas was more of a, of a person to take seriously than Valentine. I don't take Valentine serious at all. Nicholas can be deadly. When you think Cassidine, you think Helena, you think Mikos, hell, you even think Alexis. When Alexis gets in that mindset and when she gets like that, trust me, even Alexis herself can be deadly. You know what I'm saying? Like, trust me, Alexis can be dangerous. But you think of them, you think of, you know, Stavros and Stefan and, you know, Victor and, you know, you, you think of all these different Cassidines, you know, who have history of being dastardly. But when you think of Cassidine and you think of scared, you don't think of Valentine. I'm sorry, but he just does not scare me. Like, in the least. See, when you see somebody as cold-blooded, I mean, come on, his 80-something-year-old stepmother is more scary than he is. And that's sad that a mid-80-year-old woman <laughs> is, more fear, is more feared than you are. Like, isn't that pathetic? I, I just, I, I'm just throwing that out there. That's a little sad. I mean, a great grandmother is more, is more feared in the community than you are. You think you hear the name Helena Castledine, people just the hairs on the back of your neck stand up because you know her ass is lethal. Please, she would literally. I mean, come on, this is a woman who killed a woman in front of her child, and then years later bequeath the dagger that she killed the woman with to that child it don't get more savage or gangster than that i'm sorry but it just doesn't that was some savage savageness by helena even though savageness is not a word that's a new word i'm creating but that was straight savagery like the nerve helena just didn't care and i, I love helena listen if y'all could resurrect her please do Bring her back. I'm sorry, but you don't get more gangster than Helena. I'm sorry. You just don't. <laughs> I love her. Like, she could sit there and tell her guards. Like, she just... This is an 80-something-year-old woman. She just tells her bodyguards. Snaps her finger and say, come. And they haul ass at her beck and call. I love it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You know, if Judge Judy... And Helena Cassidine had a child, though, I would have to say it would probably be Cassandra Pierce. Probably. Helena reminds me a little bit of Judge Judy. And Judge Judy scares it out of me, I'm just saying. She'd be like, step out, that's all, step out. I love it. Um. So anyway, rant over. But yeah, Valentin was just so sad. He's like a sad puppy. Um, His bachelor party was even sadder. Don't nobody want to see you. I mean, James Patrick Stewart, oh, he can sing. Don't get me wrong, he can sing. He can blow. I don't know the song he was singing at karaoke, but he can blow. Trust me. That man can sing. I will give him that. I'll give the actor. You know, the actor is great. You know, I wish I had pipes like that. You know, I could, woo, yeah, but I can't do it. I can harmonize, though. I can do that. I can harmonize. But full out sing, I don't know. My voice ain't, ain't fit for that. Back in the day, maybe when I was a little toddler, but, you know, I might belt out a couple songs, but now, mm -mm. My voice ain't cut out for that. I love Chase and Willow, though. Chase and Willow, I love them. I thought it was nice and romantic how they went to the spa and they were in the steam room. I liked it. What pissed me off was Nina. 
just when I started to tolerate Nina a little bit, here she go acting like a shrew. Like she all mad because the spa double booked them or whatever with Willow and Chase. It was ridiculous. But Nina, Nina was just so damn rude telling them to get out of there. And she, I, I hate the way she comes at Willow. I hate it. It's so unnecessary. It's so unnecessary. And that little shot that she threw at Willow where she said, oh, Charlotte likes her new teacher this year. How petty and sad and childish can you be? That was just so childish. For a 50 year old woman, it's so sad to behave in such a manner. Like, seriously, Lulu needs to do something in terms of full custody of Charlotte because why would you want her to be growing up influenced by Nina? No, no, sir. No, sir. You don't want her growing up like that, be all like a little petulant child at the tender age of 40. You don't want her to be middle aged and bitter. You don't you don't want that. You you don't. No. God no. Um Nina, she was just a brat. Basically, she just acted like a little spoiled little tart. Um I started to feel bad for Nina because her entire world is about to burn around her. But after today, I don't feel bad. I don't. Whatever happens, happens. Her life is about to be flipped upside down and it couldn't happen to a better person. I'm just saying. I can't wait. Um, because she has all this undying loyalty and trust for Valentine. But the rug is about to be slipped out. It's about to be slipped out over. Maxie and Peter, I didn't care two shits about. I'm just being honest. I don't like them as a couple. It's crazy how we only see Chet here and there. I could have like, listen. You could have put Maxie with anybody. You could have put her with Michael. You could have put her with Chet. I would have been cool with that. Chet seems like a good person. I just don't see why they keep bringing him on when they're clearly not doing anything with Chet. Like, and he has potential. Like, Chet really does have potential to be a good character in the show. So I don't know why they're wasting his talents. Um, I just hate to see good actors, great actors, waste it. I hate that. That's a pet peeve. I don't care if it's daytime, prime time. I hate to see good actors waste it. It pisses me off to my core. Like, it really pisses me off. I don't like to see that. Stop wasting people. You know what I'm saying? Because Chet, Amy, Driscoll, they, they were good characters. Yeah, Amy got on my nerves a little bit, but she was bubbly. She was fun. You know, you need that. Felix, he's another good character with great potential that they didn't flesh out. Like, come on, stop backburnering these people and get them some real dialogue, real story, real interactions, real ties to the canvas. Like, because they have really great potential. And I hate to see just people go to waste. I hate that. It's a pet peeve of mine. I, I just don't like it. Um, so yeah, Maxie and Peter, I, I didn't care nothing about. They sitting there still talking about this apartment nonsense or him getting a bigger place. I, I really didn't care less. I could care less. Um, Laura and Kevin, I love seeing them work together. Because Kevin was wondering in the beginning, like, why Laura wanted to stay at Windermere instead of bringing Charlotte to their place to watch her or whatever. And, you know, he figured out Laura had an ulterior motive, of course. Um, and when they were looking at Helena's painting and stuff, you know, Laura mentioned that Helena, you know, had unfinished business with Nicholas. And she was wondering if that would spill over to, to Spencer. My thing is with Helena, even though she's been dead for years, when she said she had unfinished business, that meant obviously that she set some things into motion before she died. So that way, I, she set quite a few things in motion before she died. So that way she knew over the years she can kind of get back at certain people from beyond the grave. Helena don't play. It kind of looked like it looked like Kevin had saw something or whatever. Um, hopefully they find this kind of sale, but we all know Spencer is clearly not the client that <laughs> Jackson Hayden are working with. Um, but I love seeing them involved in mysteries and stuff. You know what I mean? I want to see more of Laura and Kevin in their marriage. You know, I love seeing older couples all in love and stuff. It's fun, you know, to watch. And I'm loving that the vets are getting some screen time. We can't forget about the veterans who made the show popping in the first place. Um, so anyway... It was kind of funny watching Dr. O and Finn talking. And I know somebody asked me that question and I would like to know the answer to it too because two months ago, 
I want to say it was a month or two ago. Um, they were supposed to. They were filming scenes, and with Finola Hughes, Finola Hughes was filming new scenes that were supposed to air a month ago, literally. And for some reason, they didn't air. So I'm like, what's going on? I guess they must have delayed her return or whatever, for whatever reason. I don't know. But it will be interesting to see Anna come back and see her reaction to Hayden. And I can't wait to see their reaction to this baby and find out, you know, where the baby is and stuff like that. I think that's going to be explosive. Obrecht sitting here talking with Michael. I just wish Obrecht would just let that, that secret out, that she knows that Wiley is really Jonah. You know, it's like she dangles a carrot in front of Michael. You know what I'm saying? Like she just says a little off, you know, off the cuff stuff just to, you know, kind of throw it out there, but not put too much out there. You know what I mean? Like Dr. O is just <laughs> like, seriously. Um. So anyway, another secret is out. So when Sasha and Obrecht were talking and Obrecht was basically telling Sasha, like, you're an imposter and stuff like that. And, you know, nobody can find out that you're not really Nina's daughter. Look like somebody else found out. Lulu overheard the conversation. I said, oh, damn. That's the last person you want to let overhear your conversation is Lulu. And the question now is, what is Lulu going to do with this information? Is she going to take it to Nina right away? Judging by the preview, she's going to take it to, to she's going to tell Dustin first. Why? I don't know, because he don't know these people and ain't none of his business, but I guess. Um, I'm curious to see what Lulu going to do with this. Like, are you going to tell Nina? Are you going to sit on this information? Because Michael tried to warn Sasha to keep an eye out for Valentine, you know, because he's starting to sniff around asking all these questions. And I'm glad how Michael shut that down, basically told him, mind your business. You know what I mean? Like, whatever happened between me and Sasha, that's between me and Sasha. Ain't got nothing to do with you. See, I like this grown man, Michael, you know, that can handle his battles on his own. Like, he ain't got to run to nobody to help him, you know, fix his, his messes. Well, this ain't really his mess, but you know what I mean. He ain't got to run to nobody for no help. You know, he handling business. Because he could easily go to Jason or Sonny to shut Valentine down. But he handling Valentine all by himself. I like it. I like it. That goes to show how grown up Michael is. You know what I mean? Like, he could handle... Big bad Valentine all by his lonesome. And we all know if it gets to be too much, you already know Jason and him stepping in. Um, but I like it though. He handling business. But Lulu, man, that's the last person you want to ever find out your business. I was like, now what are you gonna do with this gossip? What are you gonna do with this? Cause that's some hot gossip for your ass. So what are you gonna do with it? You know me. See, this is why they couldn't have me on this show. Cause I'll be going off script. <laughs> If I was on this show and I heard that and I'm in the bathroom or whatever and I overheard that, you know me. I'm running right over there telling Nina. I'm like, ooh, I'll be over there snitching. For the right price, of course, because you know information ain't free and it ain't cheap. I'm just saying. You have to pay me well. Very well. You have to pay me handsomely. I'm just saying. You know, got to make a dollar. But overall, though, I do like Chase and Willow and I could definitely see them moving forward. Um, in terms of marriage, like I said, I know some people want Sasha. I mean, they want Michael with Willow and stuff like that. And I get it, but I like him and Sasha. I do. I like him. Um, and I think Willow should stay where she is with Chase. I think she definitely should, but I like it though. I think they, they make a nice looking couple. I think all of them look good together. Even if you switch partners, they still look good together. Beautiful people, I guess. Um, so anyway, that was pretty much the whole episode. I don't think I'm forgetting anything. But anyway, if I am, hit the comment section. Let me know if I did. You know, we could talk about it. Um, so yeah, hit the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about this episode. I will see y'all all later. Have a great day. Peace.